I've been making apologies this week, and I want to make an apology to the couch. In fact, I, I don't know how you apologize the couch, to a couch except to dress in the style it is in. So. <laughs> Sit there too long. All's forgiven. I think so. Good. How you doing? How's it going? I've been busy this week. I've been really busy. I don't. I haven't had a chance to follow local news. Anything going on? Anything in the paper that I might be interested in? Uh, I did actually. I did read. I did catch one thing. I heard Ram Ramadi fell to ISIS. I did hear that. That's gonna piss some people off. I think. You're gonna, you might see a, like, a letter to the editor or something, but I don't know, that could happen. It happens. I, you know, people write letters to the editor, don't they? They write crazy letters to the editor. They say crazy things. They believe crazy things. Uh, and, uh, you know, people believe all kinds of nice things. There's a flat earth society. There are people who believe the earth is flat. I take them at their word. They have a web page. They say it. Yeah. There are people who believe that the position of Mercury and Jupiter and the moon at the time they were born should influence whether they get a car loan or not. And, what rate. and they say this, and this is a great thing. There are people who believe that Paul McCartney and the Who should continue touring. And this is the kind of insanity that we have in our society. Uh, and it's great. It's great. It's free speech. It's fantastic. It's without it, and this is totally serious, we wouldn't have a comedy night. Right? We wouldn't have the people that are able to say the stuff with, that, that they say, right? Without it, uh, you know, you wouldn't know anything about fisting. <laughs> right? that's, the, that's the bottom line here. And in fact, a lot of the, the, the comics here would be on death row if we, if we didn't allow free speech. I don't mean the record label, I mean the actual death row. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know death row. The record label. There's a VH1 behind the music. <laughs> The second half of it, I didn't get the first bit. Uh, but I think, and I include, and this is a great thing, I mean, I am 100% behind free speech, but I remind myself sometimes, it might be occasional, it might be occasionally important to remind myself that there might be a limit. There might be occasions where we might want to say, that's not something that needs to be said. I, just to pick a random example, suppose you were to advocate the violent overthrow of this present administration, <laughs> and the execution of the chief executive, President Barack Obama. And maybe somebody were to take that up, because you know, that's happened in the past. Then we wouldn't have the free speech that we all love so much, and that I love. So yeah, I love free speech, and we all love free speech, and that means we don't let it put a gun to its head. Which I think is a fair price to pay for me to hear Mike Carpenter tell me about the many ways that a uterus can be scarred. <laughs> I don't have a uterus. That's clearing up a rumor incidentally. <laughs> but if I did, I think it would be scarred by Mike Carpenter's, or as I call him, Mike Carpenter's jokes. It's inside Mike Carpenter joke, Mike Carpenter joke. <laughs> so this is a good thing. Uh, in fact, I mean, Mike Carpenter, I don't, I don't want to single him out. Actually, I do want to single him out. I want to look at my notes, though, as well. Um, yeah, no, so I, yeah, I can hear all different ways in which the uterus could be scarred. I don't have to hear that. Right? I can go out in the patio, and I can overhear other people's conversations or listen to the birds and the traffics. Nobody is stuffing Mike Carpenter down my throat. <laughs> I wrote this whole bit to get to that line. I hope that's something that everybody in this room can say, actually, as well. But that's an option. I can go hear Mike Carpenter some night. That's an option. An option we all have, as long as Mike is willing to perform for us, right? <laughs> Which is a good thing. I mentioned Barack Obama. Uh, I, I met Barack Obama. Shook his hand in the White House. Got a picture of it. You want to hear, you want to hear about that? Yeah. 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 Uh, no. uh, it wasn't my, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> uh, it wasn't. It wasn't. First of all, you might wonder how did this possibly happen, uh, knowing what we know about you. Uh, my wife, with whom I accomplished many things in virtue of her virtues, uh, got us an invitation to the Christmas party at the White House, and there we were. And it was amazing. We're in the main floor of the White House, and there's food, and there's wonderful people. And by the way, the White House, we, until we got there and thought a little bit, we thought there was just one Christmas. So there are like dozens of Christmas parties with different kinds of people. There's these folks and these folks. And we were there with people who had knocked on the doors of lots of folks. My wife was among them. 
Uh, so we were having a wonderful time. And then there's no, the president isn't wandering around. It's not like that. You're in his house, right? But it's not, it's like you know, he's not around. But it, it, it comes to, it, it comes to be understood that he's downstairs and there's going to be a point where we're going to file through a receiving line. And then this starts to happen. I mean, you're very comfortable, but it's, everything is organized. And before I know it, I'm in a receiving line. Uh, or in a long line, and we're sort of, it's like the ark, because there are couples, and we're just sort of marching <laughs> over them. And we're going downstairs into this large oval room underneath the main area, and I think of it now as the oval cellar. <laughs> and I, I actually wondered if maybe the, the White House was originally like all oval rooms, and they were like, you know, this is not going to fucking work. <laughs> the office, and the downstairs thing where we skate, that would be cool. Right? And then we think it's square, my god, this is insane. I don't know what we're doing. No more hemp is what I do. <laughs> so anyway, we're down there and we're, we're sinking along and there's the president and his wife over there and, and we're like, really like in a machine and, and you get, I don't know how many seconds, but they measure it and they know and we're just moving along and everything's wonderful. It's not like I feel I'm in a machine, but boy, we're just moving along. And I, I, I gotta stop here for a second because I'm sure you do this, but I wanna make sure you know what I'm talking about. I, first of all, I'm terrible with names. I don't know any of your names. <laughs> some of us have been friends, some of your family, dear friend, maybe some of your godparents. And, but I don't, I just, I really don't know your name. I'm so sorry if you give me a second to remind me. But so as a consequence, I'm constantly, when I'm out with my wife, asking her before we run into these people what those people's names are. And so we're, we're standing around and I thought, oh, this will be funny. Because that's what I'm thinking, you know, in the White House, why not? Why not throw some random shit in there and see what happens? And so I lean over her and I say, Michelle and... And she says, Barack. I say, no, no, that, that's got to be his last name. It's, it's like, Osama Barack or something. And she's like, you know what I'm talking about. Like, okay, all right. And I'm, just, I'm having fun until I notice the guys watching me because there are people all over the place. And there are certain people that, that was like nine. No, it's seven. And, and there are certain people that talk in their wrists. And it's the strangest thing. If you're in the White House, that's the worst thing that can happen to you. Anywhere else in the world, it's just some weird shit. Like, you're at a party. Why is that guy talking to his wrist while he's looking at me? I guess, you know, I don't know, some sort of ecstasy that causes you to talk in your wrist. But if you're in the White House, like, that's the last thing so many people have seen, you know, before they come into a burlap bag and suddenly they're deposited in a desert in Venezuela. You know, somebody's going to talk into his wrist and then, ah! So I'm like, like, I better calm the shit down because, you know, these guys are watching me. And, and as I'm thinking that, I am up there and I'm shaking the president's hand, right? And not only that, I started to say, in fact, I began a sentence. I said, thank you for... But I don't know how that sentence ends. And now I'm, I'm, I'm buying my time because there's clearly a direct object and he's waiting for it, right? And I'm conscious of the pressure behind me and I, I bring up the right hand, so we're doing the double shake and he tops it. <laughs> I got, you know, he's so cool, he's got like a third hand. He's like, I'm gonna punch your hands back here. But I don't know what I'm, I'm thinking like, what can I thank this guy for? I'm like, frantically, what the fuck did he ever send me? to my wife, like, what did they send us? Did they send us, like, a, what is it, the, the serving tray? And I'm thinking, like, well, what? And then as I'm doing this, I'm looking at his face, and all I can think of is black. And I did want to say, thank you for being black. I thought it was kind of not going to work. And then, not only that, it's not accurate, right? Because it's biracial. But I didn't think thank you for being half black was a good idea either. And I thought, maybe, wait, Christmas, did they send us a car? Because like, we got this beautiful invitation. It was like delivered by two people, and you know, he was framed, and you know, it, you pulled something, and it just went off. And, uh, and I thought, maybe, but then I thought, that was the invite, that wasn't the Christmas card. And I, I thought in my, and I'm getting increasingly frantic here, that I could possibly say to the president, thank you for the card. Mm -hmm. And he would say, because he's sharp. There is no card. <laughs> Gary Hardcastle, do what you want, James Road, Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. I did not send you a card. And then there'd be like, you know, he'd be like, I got a liar here. And then the guy's kind of a liar. So I thought, you know, he would call me on that shit. That guy's that good. So I said, thank you for everything. Everything. Everything that ever existed in the world. And maybe he has got to me, and this is what I'm going to say when I, you know, come to face to face. <laughs> Well, right, you, you're going to give me 10, aren't you? You're going to push it? It's okay, because I'm just about over. Let's stretch this time out. Thank you very much. <laughs>